Hi, I'm Patrick Palm, CEO and founder of Favro, and this is the Learn From Leaders podcast. The background to these interviews is that Favro clients are some of the most innovative and agile businesses out there. And it's used for collaborative planning by marketing teams, by product teams, HR, management teams. And what this means is that we get to know some truly inspiring people. So what we do in this podcast is that I invite them here for a conversation about something where they are true leaders. So we can all learn from it. Let's go. We are live with uh, Johan Krona. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. Very much looking forward to talking about sauce and trance. With you, yeah, and, and right now uh, I'm, in, I'm in Vilnius. We are just um, expanding our team in, in sales and account management and marketing. Um, and most of those guys we recruit here. So, so I'm, I'm, now I'm working from there. Um, so I try to work a little bit from wherever it's needed. And what about you? Are you in Stockholm right now or somewhere else? Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a, at the home office. So uh, we're, uh, we're based out of Stockholm, but uh, today was uh, working from home and we have an office in Stockholm. So I All can, right, I fantastic. can Yep. And for the ones who don't know you, so you're an investor at, you know, with Cloud Capital, but you're very much known in Sweden as Mr. SaaS, Mr. Software as a Service. Yeah. But I'm actually curious. I mean, that's a very, you know, that's a nice reputation to have. You know, you, sure. you, I know you're very high in demand. <laughs> uh, you know, you're often uh, speaking at conferences. Uh, people like to, to yeah. read what you're writing and, and be generally listening to your opinion. But, but how, did you, how did you become, you know, Mr. SaaS? I mean, what's the, what's the story leading up to this? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, um, the basis of it is that I've been an entrepreneur. So uh, I've started and ran companies since high school and, uh, and it took off in university when I, when I studied computer science. So I've been doing different startups, both computer companies, software companies, but also other, other companies. Been doing companies both bootstrapped and, and with venture capital. And eventually I ended up at an investor in Stockholm or in Sweden actually called Almi Invest. It's a, it's a government owned part of Almi. So in, in Finland, you have Tekkes and in Sweden, you have, uh, you have Almi. And so I worked there for almost seven years doing investments. And actually the two first investments I, I did over there was uh, SaaS companies. They were, that, this was around 2010 and they were not calling themselves SaaS companies, but I realized sort of the, the beauty of the business model, you know, with the cloud, with a multi-tenant environment, doing subscriptions, being able to forecast your revenues, being data-driven and all these uh, fantastic, fantastic um, parts of, of the SaaS model. So I started organizing uh, SaaS companies in Sweden. So I have a meetup group and we met, uh, you know, a couple of times uh, every semester. And that group, they, it grew into 700 people. I've uh, been taking a break from that since uh, COVID, but hopefully starting up again. And from that, you know, uh, been doing some blogging, uh, started up a, my own podcast in Swedish called Sauspodden, and um, also ran a couple events. Uh, we're running events together with Break It, the, the media uh, media company in, in Sweden. Yeah. And uh, somewhere around there, when we started the events, people, someone started calling me Mr. Sauce. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. That's uh, it's a nice title to to have. So. Yeah, and, and I can with... testify that you know uh, one of those events that you mentioned now, you know this uh, SaaS summit with um, uh, with with um, with Break It, you know the the news outlet for for the the, the new economy in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, that, that was an amazing event um, because I think it was one of the first after a very long period of having no kind of physical events because yeah. of COVID. And even though this was this was just before Omicron, so there's been a bit of a spike, you know, like after, and you know, now things are well have at least in Sweden moving back to normal. I heard that Denmark is doing the same, the UK, um, the mask men have disappeared now in California. I mean, things are going back to normal, which is awesome. Yeah. So, but but this this event was quite let's say early in the trend now of actually being able to to come to physical events. And I it was a very good atmosphere and 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 it was um, was very nice of the organizers to, to invite me to do a panel as well, which was, I haven't, haven't been on, on stage putting on some nice clothes for a very long time. You know, it's yeah. mostly been these kind of meetings, but that was, uh, that was, that was, that was, that was great. So I do hope 
as much as I love the fact that, you know, working from anywhere, you know, living from anywhere, uh, from time to time, I think we do need to get together and, and, and simply, um, you know, hang out with each other face to face. Yeah. That's a big difference from, from doing it cool. over video. Yeah. So, um, with that said, let's move into the, the, you know, the main topic of today, because, sure. uh, as with any, you know, industry, there are always kind of trends and yeah. I, I actually really like, I mean, some people don't like it, but I actually like the kind of Gartner hype curve or yeah. any other analysis hype curve, which kind of like, you know, when you have things and, you know, everyone's talking about it for a while, but maybe it's actually not really materializing. And then you have, you know, that phase when things are actually coming into fruitation and increased mm. productivity and so forth. So, you know, maybe with a little bit of that kind of thinking in mind of, you know, you know, where is this on the hype curve? You yeah. know, what are what are the trends, you know, with, with SaaS that you're seeing, you know, being the big ones in 2022? Yeah, I, I prepared some different uh, different aspects of it. And, and I think uh, from, from the highest level, I think what, what we've seen during COVID, what happened with SaaS generally was that it, uh, of course, brought forward a lot of demand. So we're looking at, for instance, the public companies is a good proxy. If you look at their growth since COVID broke out, it's been tremendous. Uh, and also, if you look at the last couple of months, uh, you can see that almost all of the, the public source companies, not the least in, in the US, have been totally slaughtered when it comes to the, the stock uh, valuation. And, and I think part of that is, you know, the, the stock market tends to be first very, very greedy, and now they are very, very scared. Uh, so what happened, I think, from a, from a macro perspective, it was that, you know, companies during uh, t- the beginning of COVID, they had actually a, bit, a hard time to, to um, catch up with the demand. So you grew as fast as you could uh, with that uh, organization and the capabilities that you had. And somewhere around end of last year, this switched because you had sort of uh, grown, um, grown your company and now also the demand uh, uh, it decreased, relatively speaking. So now a lot of SaaS companies, they have actually start, have to start, you know, thinking about marketing, demand gen, demand capture, selling. Uh, they have been in a, in a mode of just, you know, taking orders the last two years and just helping customers uh, be more digi- digital. And that is uh, changing now. And of course, the stock market gets nervous because they cannot elect, elect um, you know, just just uh, take on the same growth pace forever. So they have mm-hmm. to sort of change their their view on on these companies because the growth right now is actually slowing for most of, of the companies uh, on, on on the at least on the public companies. And, and so what happens with that is, of course, the valuations have gone down uh, tremendously, and and that will probably transfer more into the private market eventually. This is usually not happening overnight, um, but uh, the, the, the metaphor is usually, you know, the train with lots of wagons. And if the engine puts in the brakes, it takes some time before all the wagons sort of find the rhythm again and everything settled, settles down. So, I mean, in, in this total macro sense, of course, there's a lot of room left. The digitalization is, I think, still in the early days, we have mm-hmm. so much more penetrations to do with, with smart services going into companies, helping them with productivity and, and so on. Um, but it's been, a, it's been a ride the last couple of years. If you just look at a, a proxy could be, you know, the, the valuations of the public stocks, uh, at least is that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. I have two follow-up questions on that. I mean, one, uh, one do, you, do you think that will also trigger um, more acquisitions? Because there are some companies that might be in a good position to do that. Uh, maybe they also raise some fresh capital. And, yeah. and you know, now, you know, there might be some companies that are being at a, at a more attractive valuation yeah. uh, because some of the hype is gone, but, you know, the underlying fundamentals are, are really yeah. solid. Absolutely. I mean, just look at, there's been a lot of rumors the last couple of weeks uh, around, for instance, Sendesk. I mean, they're listed and they have still, I think, a decent valuation and, and so on. But now when, the, when their stock uh, price uh, decreased a lot, actually the rumors intensified that there are different private equity firms that are looking at uh, putting in a bid for them. So, okay. that, so that's super exciting because that somehow puts in a floor that yeah. these companies can't uh, decrease in, in valuation that much more because then 
the private market will actually buy them out from the stock exchange. So that's uh, it's a good good question, and it's a, yeah. it's a very nice uh, thing to to see in the market. Yeah, and I guess also between listed companies. I mean, if we look at you know Salesforce acquiring Slack, uh, seeing yeah. more things like that, or yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, look look at Salesforce is a is a fantastic company, and you know you see that they have they have bought themselves into different verticals when it comes to the marketing cloud and the service mm-hmm. now and and so on. So yeah, uh, they are uh, they are the the behemoth too. <laughs> uh, I have a second question on that, which is slightly more long term. Um, yeah. There's a lot of conversation. Well, actually, this has like two parts. So the first part um, is well, something that you know we are obviously kind of in the center of, which is that a lot of companies have now chosen that we're not going back to entirely the old normal. Actually, most you know recently progressive companies seem to have chosen a path of a more of a hybrid organization where, yeah. you know, it's not going to be maybe hundred percent remote, but it's not, also not going to be hundred percent in the office. It's going to, it's going to be way more flexibility. Yeah. And this means that um, there's a need to, to be way more digitalized, you know? Yeah. So, so that's one, one thing I'm seeing. The other trend I'm seeing is, the, um, you know, there's a lot of talk, especially in the U S but I definitely notice it right now over here in Europe as well, especially since we're hiring a lot right now, which is, you know, the, the big quit, you know, it's like so many people changing job. It's like, it's, it, I, I, I don't think I ever experienced a market where so much, uh, you know, the employees market, you know, it, it people are changing jobs a lot. And this makes, make me think about, you know, the podcast that I did uh, last week with, with uh, Zoe, who set a production at, um, at Timber Studios, which is a game studio that was formed, you know, during COVID, so they were kind of like you know COVID born, mm-hmm. and and she 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 talked a lot about kind of breaking down organizational silos and you know being kind of more of a flat organization for both for productivity but also for you know inclusion and mm. and being able to hire the best talent. Yeah. So what I'm trying to get at with this is that maybe uh, there's also um, uh, kind of a driver here. Which is around, you know, which which employers are going to be the most attractive yeah. uh, in kind of the post-COVID era, and and that will make some companies, I, I guess, typically then a lot of these tech companies maybe more attractive than others. But yeah. so so if if you look at these, I mean, I kind of threw in a couple of different things there. I mean, how do yeah. you think? Do you think those um, things will affect as well? Or yeah, for sure, uh, uh, absolutely. I think this is something that changed a lot uh, because of COVID. Because now everybody knows that it's perfectly find to work a lot from home and you can make that work and then of course the, the the employers they are really nervous because they want to have their people sometimes in, in the office because that's uh, you know that's a good thing and, and I also thought about this before um, I think one other aspect of this that we're seeing when we're meeting a, a lot of companies to evaluate to invest in that is the big difference if a company has this really strong purpose or not so there, the, the, there's a war for talent, as everybody knows, and, and now yeah. people are looking around and say, where should I, where should I spend my next uh, couple of years? And yeah. of course, one aspect is, can I work from home? It's yeah, yeah. super central. But the other aspect is, I think, not, not least that important is like, what's the purpose of this company? Yeah. If you look at companies now with uh, working, for instance, within the impact tech or in, in the green, green tech areas and, and so on, uh, you see that they have, have a lot easier time to attract really, really strong talent uh, because people will also, you know, not, not just look at a job like, okay, what's the pay and can I pay, mm-hmm. can I work from home? But actually, you know, look my family in the face and, and be, be, be happy that I'm actually making a difference for the world yeah. in, one, in one area or, or another every day at work. It's not just uh, bringing home money to pay for food. It's, it's actually yeah. trying to make a difference. Yeah. So I think that's also a lens that we are, using more and more that okay will this company be able to attract talent yeah. and is there a purpose in the company so because that will help uh for sure yeah i think i think you're very right about that um okay cool let's let's move on um that was yeah. uh, your uh, that was a macro trend yeah okay mm-hmm. cool let's uh, what would be your, your second trend to watch yeah, so I mean, another, another few trends. Uh, you and I have been on on um, on a panel before. We have talked about product-led growth. So if we're moving into more of the, the playbook parts, yeah, I think that uh, the product-led growth is uh, there's still a lot of companies that are playing catch-up. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, they have the, 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 the basic SaaS playbook has been sales led where you hire a lot of uh, AEs. And after a while you realize you also need to have someone book meetings. So you hire SDRs, um, but you talk, kind of forget about making the product really easy to try and maybe even use it for free before um, considering to, to purchase this. And I know you guys at Favro have, uh, have thought about this for a long time and, and are coming from being a, a product first company. Um, but, but there's a lot of uh, also uh, things in, in the product-led uh, domain. I think it's interesting how, how the, the more mature companies are evolving. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're seeing companies that now have very much a mixed model for, with like a free, free tier and the, and the product-led tier. And then uh, you, know, you also have an inside sales team that are working with uh, helping customers purchase larger deals. And you also have an enterprise team mm-hmm. because in order to land the really big um, deals, you actually need to have uh, sales uh, going out, doing meetings and demos and, and so on. Uh, so I think this is really interesting when it comes to, uh, there's a lot of companies moving into the product led, uh, but you still need to evolve your playbook also yeah. not being too much focused on one way or another. How do you, I mean, I guess this is not that easy um, if you are coming from a perspective of not thinking in that way, because no. um, I guess the, um, I mean, a lot of these kind of changes comes from the top and mm. then you need to make sure, you know, if that kind of thinking wasn't at the top from the beginning, yeah. uh, how do you make sure how, I mean, of course people can change. So it could be that simply mm-hmm. the CEO you know, realizes these things and and evolves into it, right? But very often, you know, there's a tendency with us humans that we're a little bit stuck in our in yeah. our thoughts, you know. Yeah. So yeah, how, how, have, how do these changes typically happen? You see? No, but I think you're on a great that's great observation because uh, I mean I, I met a company the other day that we're looking into uh, investing in, and and they've been really successful with the sales uh, led emotion, and now they're starting experimenting. With the product-led, you know, free freemium uh, tier, and and they have sort of came come to the, the hard conclusion that oh, this is not something that we're just easily going to fix. This mm-hmm. will take a lot of time. And as you, as you're alluding to, the rest of the organization is kind of well, we have this. This is uh, already working with the sales-led motion. We have all the salespeople. We have all the leads coming in. We're doing the demos. All the salespeople are getting their commission, and everybody's happy. We're growing, and and this free tier uh, initiative is kind of, yeah, yeah, they're, they're the ones in that room over there just uh, experimenting. Yeah. And, and they have a hard time succeeding because they're not getting the buy-in from the rest of the organization. They're not allowed yeah. to put up, you know, the free trial button on the, on the homepage. So mm. how are we going to drive in the, oh, it's, yeah. So you run into all these different uh, problems that you need to solve and, uh, I mean, to answer your question, I think it will take a lot of time. Uh, it's not going to be that fast as they as, as they think. I think it's probably it's it's possible, but uh, I think it's um, the way to to succeed is, of course, to have it in your DNA very very early. So that's mm-hmm. the, sort of the shout out for for the ones that are still in the early phase to try to yeah. build in the product led DNA early, because it's getting really really hard to to add on it just to an yeah, existing yeah. model. I think, uh, you know, one interesting trend that I spotted is that um, there's been an increasing amount of companies that are you doing basically uh, forced onboarding. Yeah. Um, so uh, someone who's a little bit more on the techie side, like myself, are not a big fan of this because I'm like, come on, I, you know, I, I, you know, the the tool might not be the most intuitive thing I've ever mm. seen, but it's intuitive enough that I can simply figure it out and just use sure. it, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm not even allowed to do that. I have to go through this this onboarding uh, process, mm-hmm. uh, which can be frustrating for some customers. But but I understand why they do it. Um, sure. it, it probably has a pretty um, a pretty good effect on conversion metrics and yeah. and lowering churn, and and probably also works as a way to kind of segment. You know, where should we like double down on our efforts? Mm-hmm. Which customers can be really big and really good, and mm-hmm. which ones shall we kind of you know pass to? To maybe less effort and obviously this is not the ultimate this is not where you want to get to because if you're doing it like you know truly product-led uh, then you don't need you know these things but mm. you know I, I think maybe it's a bit of a bridge where um 
um, you know, it, it, it's it's um, yeah, it's it's just a phenomenon that I that I um, you know, we were starting to use this um, this platform called PartnerStack uh, for how we work with well, basically partners, mm -hmm. and um, and you know, and it's, you know, American company, and and you know, we we it's it's really not rocket science to use it, you know, <laughs> but but it it we we had to go through this, yeah. And it's the same thing if you ever used um, uh, Superhuman, mm. uh, which is you know very focused on selling to like you know VCs, you know tech entrepreneurs. Mm. So both of us are very much their target market, mm. but you can't really buy a subscription from them without having to go through like a forced mm. onboarding. Yeah. And I think in their case, the reason they're doing this is because since they're selling something which is, I mean, most people that like superhuman really likes it so you know mm. they're doing something great but i think it's still you know they're competing with things like gmail which is also very good yeah. uh but basically free so it, you know that's like marginal uh, improvement that you can achieve by using this tool you really need to see that yeah, yeah. you know you need to well experience you know that that yeah. extra benefit otherwise yeah. you're not gonna pay for this thing mm. Uh, so, so they're forcing you to discover that, and I think I think this is, um, um, you know, personally, I'm not a fan of it. But I realize, you know, from a business point of view, you know, maybe this is actually a pretty good way to, uh, to to have like a stepping stone towards mm. more product led growth. You know, when you're not like fully there yet. Yeah, for sure. And but and also maybe another aspect of that could be I don't know what you think, but it could also be that you're having a little bit of a problem to actually. Uh, articulate you know your differentiation so the the companies today there's so many sauce sauce products out there and uh, and if people are just browsing around and, and coming into your site they will actually uh, probably be a stay for a few minutes uh, mm -hmm. if, if, if even that so you have to be super clear on you know this product is for this uh, use case and and deliver on some kind of um, value or aha moment very early on in the onboarding so yeah, I think it's that, that's also part of it of a trend to keep your eyes on that competition is is getting tougher every day and, and you have to find sort of your differentiation towards some kind of uh, ideal customer and and um, yeah then then you have an easier um, task to to be attracted to them rather than being too broad and yeah. no one really understands why 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 are we existing and who's actually our best customer so. I think that could be part of it as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And um, so, so we need a third trend here because it always yeah. needs to be three, right? Okay. Um, okay. So I think we got time for for the third trend. Do you have one? Yeah. So I mean, if we if we're moving on with the playbook, I would say the another trend that I'm very much into right now is the whole marketing space. Mm -hmm. I think that is also a, where everybody needs to start evolving really fast, or you will be left behind because. You know, inbound marketing and, and putting up uh, ebooks and collecting email addresses that has been working for uh, since maybe 2015 or something like that. But you can see now, just look at the most successful companies, how they're doing their marketing. I mean, they're more like a media company than doing some blog post in order to mm -hmm. get some SEO traffic and capture leads. Um, so the, the game is evolving really, really fast. You need to be super clear on. Who's your customer? How are we going to make attractive uh, content, for instance, to, to be on their radar continuously? And then how do we capture that uh, interest into to the funnel or into the product? So, yeah. so marketing is a tough space also that's moving really fast and evolving. And, and, and um, how do you... So, so how, do, how do you actually do that? Because I, I totally see what you're saying with okay, doesn't really work with those kind of eBooks, capturing an email address, mm. you know, kind of method anymore. You know, I, I liked what you said there. You, you basically have to be a media company, I think you said, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, it makes me think about Red Bull. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Red yeah. Bull is, they are a freaking media company. Not, yeah. I mean, making, you know, um, that kind of energy what? drink that can't be too too hard. <laughs> um, but yeah. but they, the, the, you know, yeah. so, so I think it will be hard to prove that Red Bull, Red Bull is a superior product to the similar products in the market, mm. but they're doing an amazing job with yeah. the content they're creating. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. if you see, you see, <laughs> I mean, if you look at something on YouTube, you, 
or, 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 or an Insta, you know, from them, you, you easily go down a rabbit hole because you see one video is awesome. Yeah. What's the next? And, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're great, yeah. but, but I mean, are, do we all do, you know, SaaS companies, do we need to become like Red Bull or is it, where's, how much do we need to level up to be, to be in, in the space today where we're competitive? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, for sure, I think we need to level up and, and maybe one, one suggestion is, you know, of course, experiment with different stuff. But also, when you found something that works, make sure to to uh, develop that and keep keep doing that uh, and and increase the sort of quality and the production uh, investments on that uh, more. Because I see a lot of companies they tend to be re- too fast, spreading out too thin, and doing mm-hmm. you know everything from blog posts and. Uh, and landing pages and campaigns and podcasts and videos and and uh, what have you. So so try to find something that you see is working and then double down on it and try to improve it every week. Yeah. Uh, so that you get known for you know oh you are the guys with uh, TikTok or you are the guys with yeah, the yeah, YouTube yeah. channel or you are the guys with the awesome blog posts. So yeah, it, it's not a much yeah. Uh, you get the point. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I have a feeling my head of marketing is going to use this now against me and say, Patrick, <laughs> you need to double down on, on the podcast here now. You need to do more of them. You need to, you know, continue to have great guests. You know, you need yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you know, sure. you need to cut your hair better. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, cool. Sure. Yeah, you can um, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, I think this uh, this has been very interesting and, and I hope that we can do um, a follow-up in the future and kind of like, you know, keep, keep watching trends. Uh, sure. So final question, what's going to be your next um, kind of appearance, you know, conference or? Yeah, so actually we have a, we have a live uh, event in Stockholm at Bansch. So it's together with uh, a really nice guys from Baboom. So they're doing a sales conference uh, over at Barnes, uh, Bansch Alonger, uh, later this uh, spring, somewhere around May. But we will make a lot of marketing around that on LinkedIn. So just uh, keep my, our eyes open on, on that. And I will be taking part on a panel uh, there. Um, so oh, yeah. Sounds great. Cool. I hope to be there and, um, and uh, meet you live. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. All right, super. Thank you very Th- much for having me. And it was Thank a you so much. Super, super. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care, Patrick. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed that interview. I certainly did. If you want to elevate yourself as a modern leader and help your teams become even more successful, then check out Favor Academy at favor.com. They will find podcasts, webinars, articles, all free of charge. Check it out.